Physiology of Hearing Introduction The ear is divided into three functionally distinct regions, the external, outer ear, middle ear, and internal, inner ear. The external and middle ear structures are involved in hearing, and the structures of the internal ear are involved in both hearing and equilibrium. Outer ear. The outer ear consists of the pinna in the external auditory canal. Sound waves are collected by the pinna and directed into the external auditory canal. The pinna helps in localization of sound, while the external auditory canal amplifies the sound waves. Middle ear. The middle ear is an air-filled space located behind the eardrum. The middle ear consists of three small bones called ossicles, the malleus, incus, and stapes. These bones amplify the sound waves and transmit them from the eardrum to the inner ear. Inner ear. The inner ear is located deep within the temporal bone of the skull. The inner ear consists of the cochlea, vestibule, and semicircular canals. The cochlea is the main organ of hearing and is responsible for converting sound waves into neural signals. The vestibule and semicircular canals are responsible for balance. Cochlea Physiology Cochlea is 35 millimeters long and makes two and three-quarter turns. The upper scala vestibuli and the lower scala tympani contain paralymph, which is rich in sodium ion. The scala media is the middle cochlear chamber, which has stria vascularis that secretes endolymph, which is rich in potassium ion. Scala media is electrically positive by 85 millivolt and no cochlear potential relative to the scala vestibuli and scala tympani. The cochlea is responsible for converting sound waves into electrical impulses that are transmitted to the brain, where they are interpreted as sound. Sound waves enter the cochlea through the oval window, a membrane that separates the middle ear from the inner ear. As the sound waves travel through the fluid in the cochlea, they cause the basilar membrane to vibrate. The basilar membrane is a thin, flexible structure that runs the length of the cochlea and contains thousands of tiny hair cells that are responsible for converting sound waves into electrical impulses. The hair cells are embedded in the tectorial membrane, a gel-like structure that overlies the hair cells. As the basilar membrane vibrates, the hair cells move back and forth, causing their hair-like projections to bend. This bending of the hair cells triggers the release of neurotransmitter glutamate, which in turn stimulate the auditory nerve fibers that are connected to the hair cells. The auditory nerve fibers then transmit electrical signals from the cochlea to the brainstem, where they are processed and relayed to various parts of the brain for further processing and interpretation. Different frequencies of sound waves cause different parts of the basilar membrane to vibrate, which leads to the stimulation of different populations of hair cells. The location of the hair cells on the basilar membrane that are stimulated corresponds to the frequency of the sound waves. The cochlea also has a specialized system for amplifying sounds called the cochlear amplifier. This system involves outer hair cells in the cochlea that are able to actively contract and expand in response to electrical signals from the brainstem. This contraction and expansion of the outer hair cells amplifies the vibrations of the basilar membrane and enhances the sensitivity and selectivity of the cochlea to different frequencies of sound. The organ of corti. Organ of corti contains the receptors for hearing, hair cells. Hair cells are the sensory receptors of hearing. The resting membrane potential of the hair cells is about 60 millivolt. Hair cells have a motor protein, namely prestin, stereocilia, and kinocilia. They're named for their hair-like protrusions, which are called stereocilia. Kinocilia, on the other hand, are specialized, single, long cilium found on one end of the bundle of stereocilia in some non-mammalian species. In mammals, kinocilia are only present during the early stages of development and are later lost as the hair cell matures. Stereocilia are arranged in a row of progressively decreasing height, with the tallest stereocilium located at one end of the bundle and the shortest at the other end. They are connected to each other by fine elastic structures called tip links. 
These tip links contain mechanically sensitive cation channels, which are channels that allow positively charged ions, such as potassium and calcium, to flow into the cell when they are activated by mechanical forces. When sound waves enter the inner ear and cause the stereocilia to bend, the tip links stretch and pull on the mechanically sensitive cation channels, opening them up and allowing ions to flow into the hair cell. Deflection of the stereocilia toward the kinocilium opens the potassium channels, depolarizing the inner hair cell and causing the influx of calcium that stimulates the release of the neurotransmitter glutamate, which then stimulates the afferent neurons to transmit neural impulses to the auditory cortex. At rest, the potassium channels are partially open. Therefore, deflection of stereocilia toward the shortest stereocilia closes the potassium channels and inhibits signal transmission by the afferent neurons. Outer and inner hair cells. The hair cells in the organ of corti are arranged in four rows, with the three rows of outer hair cells and one row of inner hair cells. The outer hair cells are more numerous, with about 20,000 cells, while the inner hair cells are fewer in number, with only around 3,500 cells. However, despite being fewer in number, the inner hair cells are more important for hearing, as they are responsible for transmitting the majority of the sensory input from the hair cells to the auditory nerve fibers. The outer hair cells play a critical role in amplifying the sound signals before they are transmitted to the auditory nerve fibers. Note: 95% of these sensory neurons innervate the inner hair cells, only 5-10% to innervate the outer hair cells. The Spiral Ganglion The spiral ganglion contains the cell bodies of the sensory neurons that innervate the hair cells of the organ of corti. These sensory neurons are known as spiral ganglion neurons, and they form synapses with the hair cells to transmit the electrical signals generated by the hair cells to the brain. The spiral ganglion neurons are bipolar neurons with one dendrite that synapses with the hair cells and one axon that extends to the brainstem, where it synapses with other neurons in the auditory pathway. The spiral ganglion neurons are essential for transmitting the sensory information from the organ of corti to the brain, where it's processed and interpreted as sound. Role of basilar membrane in hearing process The frequency analyzer the basilar membrane is a critical component of the hearing process, playing a vital role in the frequency analysis of sound waves. The basilar membrane is a thin, flexible membrane that runs the length of the cochlea and separates the fluid-filled chambers of the cochlea into two compartments. When sound waves enter the cochlea, they create waves in the fluid-filled chambers that cause the basilar membrane to vibrate. The basilar membrane is stiffer at the base of the cochlea, near the oval window, and becomes more thin and flexible towards the apex of the cochlea. As a result, different frequencies of sound waves cause maximum displacement at different points along the length of the basilar membrane, with higher frequencies causing maximum displacement near the base of the cochlea and lower frequencies causing maximum displacement near the apex. This frequency analysis is important because it allows the auditory system to distinguish between different frequencies of sound waves and identify the pitch of the sound. The hair cells of the organ of corti are located on the basilar membrane, and they respond to the mechanical vibrations of the basilar membrane by generating electrical signals that are transmitted to the brain. The spatial arrangement of the hair cells on the basilar membrane corresponds to the frequency analysis with the hair cells at the base of the cochlea responding to high-frequency sounds and the hair cells at the apex responding to low-frequency sounds. This gives the appearance of a traveling wave in basilar membrane. This theory is called Traveling Wave Theory of Von Bekeshe. Traveling Wave Theory of Von Bekeshe According to the traveling wave theory, when sound waves enter the cochlea, they create a traveling wave that moves along the basilar membrane from the base of the cochlea, near the oval window, to the apex of the cochlea. The wave peaks at a specific location along the basilar membrane that corresponds to the frequency of the sound wave, with higher frequencies causing maximum displacement near the base of the cochlea and lower frequencies causing maximum displacement near the apex.
As the traveling wave moves along the basilar membrane, it causes the hair cells to bend and generate electrical signals that are transmitted to the brain. The outer hair cells of the organ of Corti play a critical role in amplifying the traveling wave and enhancing the sensitivity and selectivity of the auditory system. That's all for the video. We'll see you next time.